Okay. I want to share with you a few things about flowers and plants that make me super enthusiastic. And let's <laughs> come on. <laughs> I should picture you. Okay. And tell me afterwards if you knew this about it, because I didn't, and it makes me really enthusiastic about the program. Um, so, who do you, you all live in a city? Do you live in a city as well? Okay. By 2020, 80 percent of people will live in urban areas. Now we need 60 percent more food. And urban gardens are said to be able to provide 10% of the food that we'll need in 2020. Um, flowers make us feel more at home. Uh, they take away worries. They take away anxieties. And we feel better in our homes when there are flowers and plants involved. Uh, they clean the air. It's interesting everyone knows this, yet it's still very normal to be in spaces where there's no f plants around. And we would like to change this. Um, People who feel least happy in the morning have reported feeling better during the day when they look at flowers very early in the day. And this is Harvard research that showed this scientifically. Oh, my, oh. Uh, kids, who, uh, kids in the US were reported to eat more fruits and vegetables after they started working in urban cities or urban gardens with their class. And also in urban areas with a lot of green, there's 15% less kids with over, who are overweight, so it's really interesting. Then obviously, if you have green roofs, you save on your electricity bill. Offices save 75% of their air conditioning needs. Very interesting. Urban areas in, with a lot of beautiful green report 7% less crime. But the prices of real estate go up 15% in urban areas with a lot of green. Um, and uh, people who work in offices with a lot of green become, hello. <laughs> um, they report there is a, a little number of employees getting sick in offices that have green um, uh, workspaces. Uh, and people that are in hospitals with a lot of green report needing less, uh, lower, fewer, so a lower number of days to, um, uh, to recover. Now, obviously, it's very good for concentration, so kids really learn better in uh, learning environments with a lot of green. So I was just reporting on the positive effects that flowers and plants have on different aspects of our lives. Now, Vitas and I work for Let It Grow, and we have teamed up with uh, Royal Floral Holland, which is the biggest flower auction in the world, which is located in the Netherlands. And we want to find entrepreneurs, movers and shakers, and artists that work with flowers and plants to make our cities happier and healthier. So the innovation call is live right now until September 10th. The theme is health and well-being. And we're calling on everyone to, hello, <laughs> to sign up before September 10th. Um, and the incubation program itself will start on October 21st. Now it's a five month incubation program and there's a grant of 100,000 euros involved. And we don't take equity, so it's a pretty good deal for the teams. The incubation program itself will have training and coaching uh, we'll sit with you in the beginning and we'll work with your team on specifically what you would need. Uh, there's a lot of expertise, obviously, from Royal Flore Holland, um, but also from the business side. So we'll have mentors, specifically um, uh, experts in business topics, and then we'll have Royal Flore Holland employees who are, you know, great mentors in logistics or maybe plant characteristics. Uh, you'll get money and means, so you'll have a chance at sharing the grant of 100 euro, 100,000 euros, and then you'll have a workspace in a very green place, the new location of B Amsterdam. Yeah, for five days a week. Uh, and obviously we're very um, willing to open our network for you. Hello. <laughs> so this is a timeline. The innovation call is open now. You can sign up until September 10th. Um, we love green cities. We hope you do too. And the invite to you is to either apply with your green project or tell your friends or if you're a student and you want to be an intern for the companies that will be in our class, let us know. You can reach us at hello at letitgrow.org. Flowers and plants for a lot of joy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are, we are here for a Q&A and if you want to discuss specific projects, you guys came in a little later. Did you understand what the presentation? We're starting an incubation program for entrepreneurs that work with flowers and plants to um, green the city. Thank you. Come up to us if Idea. you have any questions. Yeah. Do you already have a nice example to share? Maybe to inspire uh, new entrepreneurs? Sure. Um, for example, we're having uh, Rooftop Revolution, which is a company that wants to green all the roof, all the gray roofs that you are looking out of. I'm uh, oh, sorry, that you're looking onto, but that might not be your roof. 
So it's a crowdfunding platform with which the neighborhood can green the different gray roofs that there are. And um, that's so nice. It's really nice. Yes, because yep. you're the one who has to look at it, whereas the person who lives there doesn't even care. Yes. Right? Yep. Uh, and for example, there's Plant E, um, which is a company that makes energy from plants. So completely different business models, new business models with uh, that make use of flowers and plants. So green cities. They will allow you to charge your mobile phone, for example, with the plants. Yeah. Yeah. So the power banks will be uh, out of business pretty soon. Hopefully. But, well, right. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, you can actually charge your phone with a plant. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. No, no, that's possible right now. Yeah. So we're looking for those kind of ideas that make completely new uses of uh, flowers and plants. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So. Royal Floral Holland is investing in this program. Yes. Why are they doing this? Uh, to be able to connect to new innovations in their field um, and to give new entrepreneurs a chance. And, you know, for them, obviously, the goal is also to inspire our generation to buy more flowers and plants in the end and to learn about the positive effects that flowers and plants have so that the breeders, which are the members of Royal Floral Holland, sure. you know, sell more of their products. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I understand about flowers and plants uh, to be sold. Yeah. However, the, the entrepreneurship may be quite new to Floral Holland. It is. It? Yeah. But that's why they um, they ask a lot of entrepreneurs like myself who have a lot of experience in the startup world to um, to help them with the incubation program. But they also use their knowledge to help the entrepreneurs, and they have an enormous number of research. You know, obviously expertise. There's four and a half thousand employees who can help new teams. Yeah. Wonderful. Cool. Anybody in the audience who has uh, ambition or ideas about making our city more green? Did you come with specific projects or not? Or were you just interested? You guys? Are you students or entrepreneurs? Okay. And do you, is there, do you have a specific interest in flowers and plants or in green cities? Or? Yeah, personally, well, <laughs> Um, I come from uh, food waste projects, but okay. I'm maybe interested in things like planting herbs and uh, stuff uh, in communities to right. uh, have that available for people, but also uh, certain flowers and plants uh, for the bees, because uh, bees are having lots of sure. trouble now. Um, maybe there are ways to improve their conditions by planting certain flowers yep. in neighborhoods. So and would you want to work on something like that yourself? Uh, or that, your would, that would be nice, but I'm not like a biologist or something, so... That's kind of hard. Well, for students, we'll have an intern pool. So you can, once you get to know which teams are in our incubation program, you can mm -hmm. sign up as an intern and then intern for those programs. So that could be something for, for you to do. <laughs> That's good to know. And you too, why did you, why did you come? Because you were interested in, are you working on something with flowers and plants? Or? Hello, my name is Eva. Hi. I'm just really fascinated by plants and flowers and herbs and uh, and I'm living in a city, and I think in the future, um, even more people will come to live in a city with these huge problems about healthy food. And yeah. So I'm here to be ex inspired about well, telling new stories to each other because I think we really need new stories yeah. and inspiration about what's, what are the possibilities. So the, green, gr the gray rooftops. Yeah. So we, our, our website consists of like an online magazine in which we tell the stories about the new innovators that are working with flowers and plants on exactly what you're talking about. So yeah. letitgrow.org is basically a really nice blog with beautiful pictures and you know you can get inspired there when you yeah. go on there to read. Right. Yeah, and do, do you also have expertise about how to change the behavior of, let's say, the non-movers and shakers? <laughs> no, we're hoping that the entrepreneurs that we want to help have that expertise. So we're looking for teams that indeed have the ability to, you know, transform. To, yeah, or exactly. Awaken. And, and those are the people that we would like to help with money and means. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's really awesome. What is your background? What is your um, interest? Yeah, I'm a gamification expert, so okay. I change the behavior, but I'm doing it really on a soul level. So soil or? or soul, like zeal. So oh, the really soul, okay. deep, and um, I'm more of a priest-like person than an entrepreneur, uh, so it, I'm really kind of strange. <laughs> but your games make you think differently on yeah, a spiritual level? Or? Yeah, okay. on a soul level. So I, uh, but I, so I think that human beings use gamification and, uh, and rules in their behavior, but also in their being. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need like a different 
you, you need to reboot or, or download a new service pack or maybe even a new operation system. Uh, and you could do that by playing your games? Yeah, but it's not games on the computer, it's, oh. it's games like uh, traveling down your inner space. Ah, right. Well, it's kind of vague. And, uh, but um, so more on a spiritual level and the positive effects of flowers and plants more on an esoteric uh, level, right. really fascinating. And if you can put that kind of interventions in this massive structures like cities, yeah. wow, that's m magical material. Okay, though. but that's <laughs> what we're aiming for. Yeah, yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. And you, what Thank is you. your, um, what is the reason why you're in the audience? I know, I think he's waiting for the microphone. No? Loads of people were in the back. But, um, you were imagining what? Loads of people in the back, so oh. would, they were all important. Anyways, <laughs> I had come here because I checked out the website and the program, and I thought it was interesting, wanted to know a little bit more, because uh, interior design consultancy, workplace strategists know <laughs> that biophilic design is an important element. Companies always say, well, yeah, it's just plants, but plants are plants, plants are not cool, yeah, we have them, so, you know, what's, what's the new innovative element that you can do with plants right. for companies for all the reasons you gave? Yeah. And, uh, I'm not saying I think it's an do you see anything changing in that market? The people you work with, are they changing in their beliefs or assignments? Do they have an increased demand for, for plants? I would say yes, but it's also kind of a muscle of pyramids. Like it's kind of the last thing people do. So, but for me, it's also interesting to look into architecture and how those kind of come more together. So you have more biophilic design, not only by plants, but really merging them together and yeah, bring the outside in. Sorry. I got it. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys, for uh, being here. Yeah. yeah. So people know where to find you if they uh, have an idea about plants and green and uh, are interested in 100,000 euros. That's nice money for a startup company, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, uh, I really want want to uh, have more information. <laughs> Check out yes. that beautiful flyer. Yeah, but I think we've got an hour time or not. Yes. Or do you have to go home no, already? No, 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 no. So let's no. talk, all right? <laughs> yeah. So what are you excited about? So let's say if you have this talk in five years, what are the biggest stories you can tell then? So the big, what are the big innovations you yeah. see in your field? Um, hmm. He does work with me. Sorry, I what are we going to, what are we going to be most excited about in five years? Um, what kind of innovation? What kind of trends are you on? Well, what I, uh, the, I think the, um, uh, it's not only the innovations, it's the mind shift. Yeah. Uh, the mind shift that um, uh, we need green, we need flowers and plants around us to feel happy, to stay connected, to stay social. Uh, if you've seen some of the, um, uh, the figures behind um, the impact of, of green, of flowers and plants on people, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's ridiculous that we don't use it as much because it's so easy and it's there, but we are, um, yeah. We're not aware, I think. No. And we are aware, but there's still barriers. And but there's still barriers, yeah. And it, it's, it's the, uh, what is your first reaction? The solution for a sick building syndrome is to do something mechanical. You know, no, you know, it's, it's um, find it, with uh, plants and flowers. And I think that would be the, the greatest shift uh, in, in the coming years. I've read a really interesting book about trees um, and apparently they are have an energy connection and um, they, in, in that book, the theory is that in five years we started to think about flowers and plants like we are thinking about animals right now. Mm. They have a feeling, they have a connection, they can communicate. And I think that shift, that would be brilliant. Uh, we're not there yet, um, but these innovations, yeah, they can help create a different view and a different function 
also. So you, the um, impulse you're giving is with money, but is money making the mind shift, uh, the mindset shift? No, the money is simply there for teams to be able to commit to their, to their business. The, so we give a lot more. We have a five-month incubation program, of which money is a part, but network is a part, training is a part, mentorship is a part. Yeah, so we're looking for entrepreneurs that find solutions for that problem. Yeah. So already we're working with a company called Healthy Workers. I think so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah you need, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, along with artists, so creatives, that use in one way or another inspiring connections between flowers and plants and new ideas, uh, as well as bigger initiatives. Uh, for instance, in Rotterdam, there's an initiative called the uh, uh, Stadslab Luchtqualiteit, which is uh, surrounded by the idea that uh, in our city streets, where there's a lot of uh, pollution, we could solve that, for instance, by uh, planting mass uh, of moss walls, because they uh, uh, take out the, um, the toxins. Uh, yeah, the, the yeah the, um, the the small particles. Yeah, exactly. And these are these are really creative ideas, but they need money to test to validate, to make sure it works. So uh, even though the passion is within uh, the people in the initiative, uh, they need to get a way to, to get it out and to make it big. And that's what we're doing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. Would you say that you are passionate about plants and flowers yourself? Yeah. yeah? I can tell that you are a believer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which is cool. I learned the other day that um, not only the air can be cleaned with plants, but also the soil. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So if there's, uh, huh? I don't know, chemicals, whatever, poison, leakage, uh, whatever. Oh, well, I, I live near a hospital. Yeah, but the plants can clean the soil. That's but so also nice to hear. But also patients get better much sooner if there's plants in the hospitals. Interestingly enough. Yeah. 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 I was just talking to Vitas and we were talking about how I had a conversation with a colleague and I said to that co uh, colleague, I don't know what's the solution to this problem. And then this colleague said, deep tiling. And I said, deep tiling, what, <laughs> what in the world does that mean? And he said, well, deep tiling is a solution for almost every problem because if you take out the tiles out of gardens and out of parks and out of, you see what happens? And instead you get the grass and the green and the plants and the flowers then uh, crime decreases yeah. and then as you told us real estate money um, uh, well value increases and uh, yeah children are happier yeah. and uh, everything improves by detailing so maybe a nice uh, I, I, I remembered it while talking uh, to Vitas about uh, green and plants so I've heard that in Delft uh, waterschap in Delft uh, is uh, having a program it, it changes tiles for plants so you can just uh, take out your own uh, stoop and then uh, exchange it for plants. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's money involved as well. Because sometimes you need some financial incentive to start a new movement. Yeah. And, and entrepreneurs, they need to, you know, survive, have facilities, uh, um, eat, yeah. Yeah. invest. Yeah. So, uh, so good call. Really nice uh, to do this. Did any newer ideas arise during this, uh, this session? Thinking about your uh, own, own balcony or your street where you live in, where a nice new initiative could help, where you can use the money. You were talking about herbs, right? Yeah, maybe uh, herbs or edible plants for the community, because uh, right now a lot of uh, vegetables and other produce are being wasted by uh, supermarkets because people are not eating them and uh, agriculture producing too much stuff that people don't use but if you could like just put it in a community and people can just take it maybe that's uh, better than uh, what they're doing now but i was also thinking what plants are also good for from my environmentalist perspective they also help with reducing temperatures uh, locally right. because right now we're kind of battling with uh, climate change and we have uh, more extremes especially in summer it's getting hot 
and uh, trees and grasses can really help with absorbing uh, heat from the sun and relieving uh, people during uh, those times. Yeah. And that might also be a good reason to have more plants in a city because already I, f I believe that uh, temperatures in cities on average are already uh, two Celsius uh, higher than uh, outside. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so this is also a very interesting subject for me. Uh, so Could at you school, put the microphone a little bit closer. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So at school, when we have to make new ideas for something, I always try to come up with green solutions. So, for example, we had to make a knowledge system about anything we wanted. So I made one that explained people how they could rearrange their garden with the water and the plants and everything to make it more attractive for bees. Uh, but the reason why I focused on individuals and not on society by itself is because I have the feeling that we, we build everything very dense, like we take up a lot of space as humans, uh, but most of it is owned privately. So I think in order to change that, you need to uh, talk to the individuals as well and try to convince them that they need more green in their life. So, yeah. Hello. Thank you. I agree with you that there needs to be a little evangelism for this topic, doesn't it? Yes. I think nobody knows the benefits of green Not plants, enough, et cetera. No. That's yeah. why we cre created the online platform to just tell the stories. Guys in the back, we're talking about the positive effects that flowers and plants have on our lives in the cities. <laughs> Did you come because you're specifically interested in this topic or? You love flowers. Wait for it. <laughs> you're gonna get a microphone. <laughs> now that you're participating, you might oh. as well use the microphone. Uh, I uh, once saw a, a campaign uh, for uh, guerrilla marketing. No, not guerrilla marketing, but it's against the guerrilla. Um, what is it now? Oh, and they were giving out roses, or? Yeah, they they are uh, in the bush bush, <laughs> and um, which country was? I think Mexico. There's a lot of uh, hmm? Colombia. That's one. And uh, they make a campaign for uh, the guerrilla uh, striders, FARC, and uh, they started to, to uh, hang up flowers uh, on the trees and uh, make trees uh, m uh, with lights. And uh, it had a, a really big positive change for, uh, for the guerrilla, for the FARC members. And, and a lot it of them- less violent or? Yeah. Wow. And uh, a lot of, uh, a few of them uh, did go back home and uh, stop with fighting. So it's, it was r really amazing wow. to, to, to say that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how it's called, but uh, the positive effect of uh, making l w with light and flowers, it was it's like they say, we want peace, we don't want to fight. Just uh, have one moment with this tree and uh, think on the, uh, think on all the people uh, back home, mm. and it was so positive change in the in the it the the fights degrees at thirty percent. Wow! So it's really really high. Yeah, it was really impressive. So we'll look it up. Thank you. We were just talking about how crime rates also go down in cities that have a lot of green. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Really taps into Super. the story. Yes sharing a story about how detailing decreases crime in a neighborhood, increases the value of real estate, increases um, happiness, etc., and yeah, yeah. decreases, uh, you know, jeugdzorg, uh, stuff like that. So uh, happening in the Netherlands as well, where crime is not so much as an issue as in the, in the guerrilla, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, thanks. Any more stories about green and plants and flowers and how they will improve um, well, contribute to a better society. Story to share. Because there's 100,000 euros in it at stake, huh? if you have a nice idea and you're an entrepreneur, you have an innovative idea, yes, that's what this talk is about. Yeah. We're going to run an incubator for entrepreneurs that work with flowers and plants to improve the cities, make them happier and healthier. That's what we're launching today, let it grow. So check out the flyer that's in your lap. Cool. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. And if you have a nice idea, and when I was young, we had um, something with bread. So um, with bread, with bread, and uh, it's a gisting process uh, and uh, fermentation, fermentation, and uh, out of that fermentation, you give a little, a little bit of the bread to uh, the next one, and so everything is growing, growing, growing. So um, maybe you could, you might. You're giving it to the next person. Yeah, with with with, uh, with seeds. Oh yeah, shoe right. days, Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So maybe you can do the do, do the same with flowers and <laughs> create your own uh, uh, flower comp uh, flower company. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Will, that I think that that is really nice. And if you give every flower, uh, every seed, uh, a story from uh, which house it uh, it came from, uh, how it begins, and uh, what is the 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 things you uh, have um, in the story of the of the grow of the plant what kind of things did did uh, you uh, <laughs> have you meegemaakt uh, did you experience yeah your experience so i think this is a nice idea thank you for the suggestion you should enter yeah <laughs> the competition yes spectacular yeah as long as the plants don't give you power, those power banks will. They will charge your phone for one <laughs> entire uh, load. Hi. Oi. Uh, now, what the uh, Dutch um, supermarket uh, is doing right now, uh, Albert Heijn, you, yeah, you they already talked little about yeah. it, yeah? Mm -hmm. or, or you, no, you we didn't talk about it. No, no, go well, on. I, th I think um, that's a really nice uh, initiative. I don't know if everybody knows about it, but when you spend 10 euros with the Dutch uh, supermarket, uh, they give you uh, l little uh, seeds. And uh, I think it's a big hit because many young people now get interested yeah. in, uh, uh, in the growing seeds. Yeah, it's super cool. So, uh, yeah, 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 no, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can. We're trying yeah. to partner up with Albert. Well, it's a nice yeah. example because kids are really starting to grow their little plants, uh, their little um, crop, vegetables, right? So you could start a new version where you go plants and flowers, right? And I think they will be m more successful even because the broccoli just doesn't come up, right? The, b <laughs> the broccoli always fails. <laughs> Attributing. Okay. <laughs> Not growing either. The what? It's hard to grow crop, whereas it may be more easy to grow a flower. Not all of them, but some. Well, the, the funny thing is um, that I think it's also, um, we are very connected to our laptop and our mobile phone. We know how to work with it, do everything with it, play with it, uh, have our, our, our games with it. And we kind of lost the touch of how to grow our flowers and plants. And maybe reconnecting it with our phone is is a way to reconnect also to uh, to our flowers and plants to uh, get feedback from uh, we need more nutrition or more water to get um, a signal on your phone like now is the time to relearn how it works and yeah uh, so maybe that's also a reason that we cannot get the broccoli going no. Uh. Yeah, because you don't know. You have never done it, you know. It's, you, before, you didn't know how to eat, so you had to also learn it a bit, at least properly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a real nice initiative, because so many kids nowadays think that milk comes from factories, etc. So it's such a nice initiative to uh, start with. Yeah? Uh, th that reminds me of the Tamagotchis we had 10 years ago, I think, where you had to grow yeah, all you your take care of your virtual electronic friend, dog. digital friend, yeah. but I don't know if it really helped with seeds. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Growing the egg. Okay. Any more uh, questions? Susan. Yes. 
I think it should be part of our lifestyle, right? Because now you have like the uh, great interior magazines where not as much plants are in it. Yep. Because, yeah. And I think um, I own plants. I buy flowers for myself every week because they make me happy. Nice. But um, I don't know how to maintain their living. They all die. Mm. They the really plants. All, yeah, the plants die. And that's because I don't know how, I don't know how to uh, maintain them. I think that should be like with education. You should learn kids how to mm. and which plants are actually suitable for your place. Because I have uh, like the evening sun and that's really important to know for which plant you're going to buy. Because yeah, you have like the, I don't know how it's called, but you have the plant who doesn't need a lot of water. And I thought, well, that's maybe good for my house. So I bought them, but I drowned them. So they died. Yeah, all right. So I think if you have like an app, which y you have them also for farming, you, you can have even have like cows can be measured to uh, maintain their living like to a better uh, like quality. Yeah. I think w sh something like that should be for mm. plants. And if people know how, then it takes less time, less money to maintain the plants. And then maybe it will be more the of a lifestyle. The knowledge is out there though online. Yeah, but it's not like... Because I always Google my plant and then just know exactly. So every every evening I boil water oh, really? and then I let it cool down. And in the morning I water my plant so the calcium, the caulk, oh, the yeah. sword, yeah. is out of it. And that keeps the leaves very oh, green. Oh, really? And then you have to put your plant approximately three meters from your window so the direct sun is not on there, but it does have light. Okay, but, but this sounds like a lot of effort, you know? And that's maybe, that's maybe, it's like time. We, because but the it makes people you feel have a lot of When tiles. you put in the effort, also scientific research shows that just engaging with your plants yeah, okay. does something for your, you know, for your level of anxiety, goes down, you feel better. Because I think a lot of people have Interaction tiles. Interaction with nature, you know? Have tiles because of the time, right? You don't, like people have a lot of tiles in yeah. their garden yeah. because of the time. Right, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. So I don't have a solution for the problem, but I have problems, <laughs> you know? We hope that entrepreneurs come up with solutions and then we'll back them in our incubation program. Boom. I'm so happy you shared that because I'm the same. Plants do not survive in my house. I don't know why, if it's personal or not. But I talked, uh, we had a previous talk and we talked about these little devices, sensors, that you can stick in the soil and it will tell you if the plant is too dry or too wet, yep. right? Wonderful. So I'm going to invest in those. Yes, <laughs> those will save my plants. Did you want to comment? <laughs> because I, what you're talking about, I think that is the mind change or the mindset change we need to have. So if you feel like your plants are your pets, then it hurts in yourself because they died. So every week you have to have a funeral and you, you, you're not getting happy of your plants. It's making you sad. <laughs> and for me, this, yeah, this is kind of a... Um, Opbichting, because I sense plants, and uh, so I, I, I have this sensor inside of me, and I have this wonderful banana plant, and at some point it's telling me, you, <laughs> I'm thirsty, and it's, it's so weird to have it, but I can communicate on this weird level with my plants. So at some point I ask, will you please grow flowers again? And, and it grows flowers. It's fascinating. <laughs> Pretty. So you don't even need technology to keep your plants alive. That's that's better. Yeah, yeah. It's connectedness. Wonderful. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, this was more? fun. This was In fun. Yeah. Yes. Thank we you everyone about for joining how, us. How flowers in Colombia uh, decrease uh, yeah, I'm gonna crime look up by that story. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. We're gonna. Thank you. Yeah. So www.letitgrow.org for the online magazine. If you know of people working. On project, letitgrow.org slash apply before September 10th. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you, Irene, for your uh, idea. Thank you for the moderation. <laughs> yes. Welcome. <laughs>